The sounds of the battle were echoing in the palace, dim and far away. Cinder held a gun in one hand and a knife in the other. She entered the throne room. Only two people were in the room. Lavana on the throne and Thorn. Standing precariously close to the ledge, Cinder had jumped from days before. Cinder reached for him with her thoughts, but Lavana had already claimed him. Well, it's about time. You have no idea how awkward these last few minutes have been. Rough day? Your leg? Hurts like hell. But it won't kill me. Cinder took a hesitant step forward. Thorn took a step back, one step closer to the ledge. Do not come any closer. I suggest you do not raise your weapons either. Unless you think he is as lucky as you are. I'm pretty sure he's luckier. I am not myself at the moment. Though it seems neither are you. Why, Celine? Why do you want to take everything from me? You're the one who tried to kill me! Remember? You're the one who's sitting on my throne. You're the one who married my boyfriend. You don't understand how hard I worked for all of this. How many years of planning, of laying the foundation, the disease, the shells, the antidote, the soldiers, the operatives, the carefully orchestrated attacks. It was done. It was perfect. He would have announced our engagement at the ball, but no. You had to be there. Back from the dead to haunt me. And you come here, and you ask my people to hate me. And you show that... that horrid video and fill their heads with your lies. My lies? You're the one who brainwashes them? I just showed them the truth. Lavana flinched turning her head even farther away like she couldn't stand to be reminded of what she was hiding underneath the illusion of beauty. What I can't understand is how you could have done that to me. I was just a kid and I know those burn scars you have. I have the same scar tissue where I lost my leg. Knowing what it's like living with that, how... How could you do it to someone else? You weren't supposed to survive! At least I would have had the mercy to kill you and be done with it! But I didn't die. Yes, I've noticed. It is not my fault someone thought you might be worth saving. It is not my fault they turned you into... into that! Who did it to you, anyway? Who hurt you like that? You don't know. Why should I? You stupid child. Because it was your mother. My own sweet sister. Would you like to hear how it happened? She was 13, and I was 6. She was learning how to use her gift, taking great amounts of pleasure in manipulating those around her. Oh, I was always her favorite target. Oh, she was very good, as am I, as you are. It is in our blood. At that age, it was her favorite trick to convince me that she loved me dearly. Having never felt love from our parents, it was not a hard thing to get me to believe. And then, when she was sure I would do anything for her, she would torture me. On this particular day, she told me to put my hand into a fireplace. When I refused, she made me do it anyway. As you've seen, by the time she let me go, it was not only my hand that suffered. My mother. After that... They started to call me the ugly princess of Artemisia. The sad, little, deformed creature. While well, Shannery was the beautiful one. Always the beautiful one. But I practiced my glamour, and I told myself that someday they would forget about the fire and the scars. 
Someday I would be queen, and I would make sure that people loved me. I would be the most beautiful queen Luna had ever known. Is that why you killed her? So you could be queen? Or was it because she did that to you? Who says that I killed her? Everyone says it. Even down on Earth, we've heard the rumors that you killed your sister and your husband and me all for your own ambitions. What I have done, I have done for Luna. My struggles, my sacrifices, everything has been for Luna. All my life, I've been the only one who cared. The only one who could see the potential of our people. We are destined for something so much greater than this rock. But all Shannery cared about were her dresses and her conquests. She was a horrible queen. She was a monster. But no, I did not kill her. Though I've wished a thousand times that I had. I should have killed her before she ruined everything. Before she had you. A healthy baby girl who would grow up to be just like her. I don't know who I would have become if I'd grown up here, but I am not like her. (laughs) Oh, yes. On that note, I believe you are correct. When I first saw your glamour at the Commonwealth Ball, I was surprised at how much you resembled her. But that seems to be where the similarities end. Now, little niece, you are much more like me, willing to do anything to be admired, to be wanted, to be queen. Not like you either. I'm doing this because you've given me no choice. You had your chance. You you couldn't have just been fair, been a good ruler who treats her people with respect. And Earth, you, you wanted an alliance. Earth wanted peace. Why couldn't you just agree to it? Why the disease? Why the attacks? Did you honestly believe that was the way to get them to love you? Love. Love is a conquest. Love is a war. That is all it is. No. You're wrong. Fine. Let us see how much your love is worth. Relinquish all rights to my throne and I will not kill your friend. How about we put it to a vote? Let the people decide who they want to rule them. Thorn took a step back, his heel hitting the edge. (gasps) The second you kill him, I'll kill you. Then I will change the terms of my offer. Sacrifice yourself and I will not kill him. Even I can see that's a bad deal. Thorn. Do me a favor. Tell Cress I meant it. Thorn. All right, your queenliness. I'll call your bluff if she won't. I'm not negotiating with you. If you kill me, you've lost your last bargaining chip. And Cinder wins. So let's talk about your options. You can either accept that your time as queen is over, and let both of us go. And maybe Cinder will have mercy and not have you executed as a traitor. Or you can throw me off of this ledge and- Thorn! 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 Thorn fell, throwing his body forward at the last minute. One hand grabbed the ledge. Cinder dove. She grabbed his arm. Thanks. His free hand swung upward, punching Cinder <laughs> on the jaw. Sorry! <laughs> That's not me! I know. She dragged him onto footing, but he stabbed her in the thigh. Then he aimed a gun at her temple. Ah! Cinder recoiled, but it was not Thorn who had fired, but Cress. Thorn's hand was empty and covered in blood. I'm sorry! I'm sorry, Captain! Nice shot! Cress! The Queen! Shoot the Queen! Cress whimpered and changed her aim, but Thorn was on her, stabbing her. She clutched her stomach. I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! Cress! Cinder launched herself at him, ripping the knife away. Cress collapsed to her knees. Cinder... Stars! Cinder whipped around. Scarlet and Wolf had arrived. No! Run! Get out of here! 
More weapons, more potential enemies, more people she loved that Lavana could take from her. She reached out to them with her thoughts, but Wolf could no longer be controlled, and Scarlet was already taken. Scarlet grabbed Cinder by the hair and yanked her head back. Cinder rolled over and shoved Scarlet off, hitting her on the head with her metal hand. Scarlet skidded across the room. Wolf scooped Scarlet into his arms and cradled her. Wolf! Please! Please! Help Crescent Thorn, please! Lavana was on her knees behind her throne. She had given up on trying to use her glamour. Cinder lifted the gun, aiming for Lavana's heart. At the same time, Lavana lifted her own gun. Cinder felt her fingers twitch. She tried to pull the trigger, urged her finger to pull it, begged it, but she couldn't. Ah, you are tired too, I see. Cinder snarled. She settled her focus on the queen's trembling hand and lashed out with her thoughts. Lavana's eyes widened. She looked down at her own hand, as much a traitor as Cinder's. She was the mirror image of her aunt as they both pressed their guns to their own temples, primed to shoot. This is how it should have ended the night of the ball. This is how it should be. Goodbye, niece. Cinder could not take back her own arm, but her body burned with resolve. She would keep her finger from squeezing the trigger. She would not let Lavana pull it. She would not. And then, a snap echoed in Cinder's head. She gasped, and her hand dropped to her side. <laughs> Fine. Fine. I surrender. I relinquish my crown to you, my country. My throne. Take it all. Just... Just let me be. <laughs> let me have my beauty again. Please. Cinder studied her aunt. She was too exhausted for even her own glamour. Too weak to fight anymore. A shock of pity stole through her. This miserable, awful woman still had no idea what it meant to be truly beautiful or truly loved. Cinder doubted she ever would. I accept. Lavana grabbed the forgotten knife and lurched forward, driving the blade into Cinder's heart. Shock exploded through her chest and she fell backward. Lavana fell with her, her face tight with rage. She had both hands on the knife now, and when she twisted it, every nerve in Cinder's head exploded with agony. Instinct alone prompted her to raise the gun and fire. Her name echoed. A shadow passed in front of her. Kai looked at her, and his mouth formed her name, but his voice was lost to her, so loud, but far, far away. Cinder's eyes sprang open, met with a white ceiling and blinding lights. She jerked upward and hissed at the shock of pain in her chest. It's all right. What is she doing to my hand? Fixing it. This is Dr. Nandez. He's one of Earth's best cybernetic surgeons. I had her flown up yesterday to... Look at you. I'm not dead? You almost were. The knife penetrated one of your prosthetic heart chambers, which drove your body into survival mode. That chamber shut down while the rest of your heart was able to keep functioning, more or less. Did I get that right? Close enough. My retina displays functioning again. You were in need of a new processing unit. The one you were installed with wasn't designed for full underwater submersion. Thank you. You should lie back down. You were stabbed, you know. I remember. Lavana's dead. Lavana's dead. Everyone's alive. But Cress is... Her vitals are stable, and they're hopeful for a recovery, but she hasn't come out of suspension yet. Scarlet had a mild concussion, but she's alright. Thorn lost two fingers, but he's a prime candidate for prothesis if he wants them. Wolf is... Uh, well, they can't undo the bioengineering without risking serious damage, but he's alive and well. And is, you know, wolf. Jason suffered some injuries, but nothing life threatening. And Princess Winter, she's been inconsolable since the revolt. They've had to keep her restrained. Give the hand a try. It works. Thank you. My pleasure. I'll be back to check on you in a few hours. Are you the king of Luna now? No. As Lavana was never the true queen, she didn't have the legal power to appoint anyone as king consort. I am technically a widower, but I think I can get that annulled. What else do you need to know before I let you get some rest? Am I... 
Do they, do they think? Yes, Cinder. You're the queen of Luna, but you don't need to worry about anything right now. Torin and I are taking care of everything. Making sure the injured are taken care of, getting the city cleaned up. Oh, and the antidote. We prepared some big shipments for Earth, and the technicians have been working to produce more batches. Although the antidote is produced using shell blood, and there's a whole complicated mess of laws surrounding the shells and the antidote, and I didn't feel comfortable doing anything without you. That's something we're going to have to deal with, though, when you're ready. Thank you, Kai. I'm sorry. I should just let you sleep. It's just... It's really good to see you awake. How long was I out? Three days. Three days. What a luxury. A much deserved one. Take your time recovering. The hard part is over. Is it? Well, the dangerous part is over. Can you do something for me? Anything. Can you call a meeting? You, me, the Earthen leaders, and whoever you think should be invited. An official meeting. An important one. Cinder. And my stepmother. Is she still here? Yes. Bring her too. And maybe that doctor too. Cinder, you need to rest. I'm fine. I have to do this as soon as possible before anyone else tries to kill me. You have to do what, exactly? Sign the treaty. I want to make our alliance official. So you're going back to the farm? Of course I'm going back to the farm. I mean, not tomorrow, but once things have calmed down. Well... Do you still... Do you still want me to come back with you? Now that I'm... That I... Do you still want me? Wolf. Ziv. I still want you. It's just... I know I'm not what you had in mind. Is that so? Because I was envisioning a big strapping fellow who can chop firewood and master a post hole digger. And you certainly fit that description. Scarlet. Ziv, everything they changed is superficial. They didn't change you. You're the only one, Ziv Kessley. You'll always be the only one. I love you. Healy. I couldn't tell. Jason slumped in a visitor chair as Winter finally slept. Her heartbeat is still accelerated, but at least she's sleeping. We'll check on her again when she wakes up. Kicking and screaming. Crying. Howling. I don't get it. It should have made her better using her gift, not worse. She shouldn't be like this. After so many years of fighting it. All those years are precisely what caused it. <sighs> it might help to think of the brain and our gift as a muscle. If you don't use that muscle for many years, and then one day you decide to push it to its full potential, you're more likely to strain it than strengthen it. She did too much, too quickly, and it damaged her mind quite extensively. I am destroyed, she had said. Not damaged, destroyed. As the doctor left, Jason scooted closer to Winter's bed. He checked the padded restraints on her limbs. He hated it, but he agreed it was for the best. She had become a danger to herself and others. But even in her last desperate act, Jason knew she had done it to save him, not herself. I love you, Winter. I always have. It would change nothing. Every bit of logic told him so. A stupid, idealistic kiss could not put her mind back together. But he had nothing to lose. If nothing else, it was a goodbye. He kissed her. When he opened his eyes, she was staring back at him. Damn it, Winter. You... How long were you pretending to be asleep? She stared at him. Did she recognize him? Win... Princess? Hello. Do you see the snow? Snow? It is more beautiful than I'd ever imagined. I am the girl of ice and snow. And I think I'm very glad to meet you. Hello, snow girl. I'm glad to meet you too. 